Today, Christians in many parts of the world are observing Ash Wednesday, a most unusual day in the Christian calendar. Most days of the year, the focus of our faith is on how to live an abundant and holy life, a life of compassion and generosity, a life committed to justice and reconciliation, a life of forgiveness and hope. But on Ash Wednesday, we pause and we step back for a moment to focus not on holy living, but on holy dying. Or, to be more specific, we focus on how to make sense of our dying in a holy way. Those of us who live in America and in many other places in the contemporary world live in a culture that tends to push dying away, to distance ourselves from it, to minimize it. We fail to make adequate end-of-life preparations because we don't like thinking about it. We worry about taking children to funerals because we think they might be confused. We never seem to know what to say when we have to write a condolence card. In all kinds of ways, we try to avoid reminders of our own mortality, of the fragility of our lives and of all life. If we think of death at all, we're conditioned to think of it as a tragedy, one that must be avoided, perhaps even at all costs. But on Ash Wednesday, we choose to draw near to the reality of our life's fragility, with gentleness, with curiosity, and with courage. This is what the ashes of this day represent. Marking our foreheads with them on this day isn't some kind of assertion of religious superiority. No, the ashes are a mark of solidarity with all other people and indeed with all of creation. The ashes are an acknowledgement that we accept that our life is fragile and precious and time limited, just like everyone else's. The ashes are a sign of unity, a reminder that whatever else might separate us from one another in this life, our mortality is the great equalizer. And in this shared truth about dying lies a deep hope for living, for how we might live together in greater harmony. After all, none of us are getting out of this life alive. What if we use Ash Wednesday as a time to rededicate ourselves to living in greater unity and solidarity with our neighbors? to let their struggles be our struggles, their joys be our joys? What if we recommit to honoring the fragility and the gentleness of every life with whom we share this planet? What if what we give up for Lent this year isn't chocolate or ice cream, but the callousness or the ignorance with which we so often treat one another? For if we're all destined to be one in death, perhaps the blessing to be found in that truth is that we're all destined to be one in life, too.